exactly what you want to see. Let's run this puppy in. Score a touchdown and tie this game. Life, run for your life, touchdown on one play. Worked on this in practice. Touchdown. It's up to Kelvin Benjamin. This is all you, buddy. Kelvin Benjamin for a touchdown. Oh, he toasted his man. Holmes toasted his man. Spin move. Oh! Oh! What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Water Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Madden 22 Atlanta Falcons retro rebuild here on PC. That is right, we return and I do have some unfortunate news regarding this series. Since we all know that Madden 23 will be coming out within the next week, if that, it, it's coming out next week at the earliest with with early and really early release and everything so madden 23 will be here within the next like seven days not even so with that fact being known <laughs> this series i don't want to carry over too many series from madden 22 i kind of want to just jump right into madden 23 and get all the new content out while the old content can kind of just go away and retire so we are already bringing over the cougars because the cougars is going to bleed a little bit into madden 23 cycle because i'm gonna i'm gonna finish that full season i don't want to leave you guys hanging because the cougar series has been the best series ever so i don't want to leave you guys on a sour note with my best series ever so i'm gonna continue that series until it's finished uh at the end of the season so you don't have to worry about that but i don't want to bring over like every single Madden 22 series that I'm doing. I don't want to just continue that over. I want to do Madden 23 stuff. So, unfortunately, this is going to be the series finale of the Atlanta Falcons Retro Rebuild. Now, don't get don't get too upset or anything because once the modders in the modding community gets into the game on Madden 23, gets into the files and all that stuff, um, then I will bring back the Retro Rebuild series. But they, it's just going to take a little bit of time because at initially, and for the first couple of months at least, at least that's how it was for Madden 22, the modders were not able to get in. They were not, they were like locked out, but then they were able to get in later and then that's how we have this series. So once they do that, then I will bring back the, Madden, the Retro Rebuild series for Madden 23, but this is going to be the series finale of Madden 22's Retro Rebuild series. I am going to also um, say this on the... 49er series but the next episode that is probably going to come out this upcoming Monday is going to be the series finale of that series I'm going to mention it again in that episode but I just I'm carrying over one Madden 22 series into the the next year cycle I don't want to carry over an, another one so both of those series are going to be finishing on their next episode which is th for this series is this one and then for the, the Legend series, it's going to be then the one coming up, I think, on Monday or something. So look forward to that. That's going to be the series finale of that episode. We also have the series finale of this episode. And I do want to mention one thing for Madden 23 on the PC. I did hear a rumor. Now, I don't know if it's confirmed, but I'm pretty sure it's like 98% confirmed that Madden 23 on the PC will not have next-gen physics. So it'll be the old-gen game still on PC so that sucks I don't know why a billion dollar company like EA can't for some reason put the next gen stuff whatever whatever makes Madden next gen for like PS5 and Xbox Series X whatever it, whatever makes it that version why can't they just put that on PC I don't know if there's like technical stuff you can't figure out I don't know what it is you, you are your billion dollar company you should be able to hire people to figure it out so unfortunately like I said, it's it's not 100% confirmed, but it's most likely confirmed that PC Madden 23 will not have the next-gen stuff. So, unfortunately, it'll still be like this game with the older-gen style. But that's not, like, a horrible thing. I just wanted to let you guys know now so that you're not, like, shocked when the first Retro Rebuild episode comes out and it's not next-gen, like, physics and stuff. So, I think that's everything that I wanted to tell you. I am upset and sad a little bit that this series is ending because I am enjoying this series. I, I always love doing retro stuff. I like doing throwback stuff and seeing like what would happen if 
I don't know, like Calvin Johnson was drafted to the Falcons, let's say, like like what we have in this series, like stuff like that always um, like interests me, and it's it's very very fun to see what would happen. So I, I always do like I do enjoy making these series and doing this stuff, and I hope you guys do too. So with all that being said. Let's actually get into the series finale and see what's going on. So we've got the playoffs here. Last year, we made the playoffs for the first time in the entire series. And we made it all the way to the Super Bowl. We had a magical Cinderella run, but it was ended by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, in the last episode, we checked. And the Jaguars aren't even in the playoffs this year. So there's really nobody in our way from winning the Super Bowl this year to close off this series. That would be the ultimate way to end this series is to win a Super Bowl since we struggled for so long in this series. Not making the playoffs, having losing records, and then finally last year we broke through the ceiling, got to the playoffs, and then exceeded all expectations and got to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, we just weren't good enough to beat the Jaguars that night. But then we learned from it, we, we recovered from it, we won 14 games this year, we won the division by three games, and now we are in the divisional round, ready to go, ready to make a run at a Super Bowl again, and this time actually come home with the Lombardi. So that's the goal for this episode. I don't remember if we did stats. I think we did. I think we took a look at stats last episode because we took a look at um, Michael. I remember taking a look at Michael Vick's stats on the on the uh, the Bills. Let me go back to the Bills and make sure that we did. Because I remember we took a look at Michael Vick's stats. Yeah, I think we've done stats for the year. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I always hate doing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember because we got Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson over a thousand yards. I remember doing stats. I always hate coming up to the end of episodes or end of seasons because I forget if I did stats or not. <laughs> because I these videos don't come out like back to back to back. So I don't remember all the time what I did at the end of episodes. So I, at the end of season episodes especially, I don't remember if I do stats. I, I think I did. I think we talked about the awards in the last episode. I think we talked about the, the, the stats. We talked about all that stuff. And now it's time to go to the playoffs. And we might take a look at, if we have time, we might take a look at like career stats for some of these guys because most of these guys we drafted ourselves. So all their stats will be what they did in this series throughout their entire time since being drafted so we'll get a good feel for how everybody played so that's a good thing but we've got the philadelphia eagles this one should be pretty straightforward they're not a very good team we are a very good team at least that's how we played this season so let's get into this game play the moments and beat the philadelphia eagles tonight from mercedes-benz stadium in atlanta georgia it's the oh, NFC oh, Divisional oh, Round Playoffs oh, on oh, EA Sports. Oh, oh, oh. It's the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. The NFL playoffs are on EA Sports, and we've got a packed house here in Mer Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's time. We're jumping into the division round. Already down 7-0. The Philadelphia Eagles got the ball first, and they started with the scoring first. That's going to be a quick pass on second down, getting it right to Calvin Johnson. We know the drill. Get the ball to Calvin Johnson and be okay. That was luckily not picked off. I kind of screwed that up a little bit. That one's on me. I thought Jason Witten was going to be a little bit more open than that. But this is for a chance to be in the AFC or the NFC Championship. We're in the NFC. That's right. The NFC Championship. Do we want to be in the NFC Championship for the second year in a row? I think we do. I certainly do. Let's see if I can fit that into Jason Witten. That would have been the greatest catch of the series if he would have caught that. But we are going for this on for, on fourth down. I do not blame them for calling this play. And I'm going to get that away. Randy Moss with the catch. He got picked at the start by Harrison. 
but he was able to get past and for the touchdown he was able to catch it unbelievable but maybe the defense needs to step up a little bit more hold him to a field goal good job stop him there get to field goal range for us into the red zone at the 18 yard line i'm gonna send randy moss on a, a stop and go yeah 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 i'm gonna send him on a stop and go that could be pretty elite but it's not gonna work out like that because we've got calvin johnson calvin johnson's gonna be the guy Megatron with the catch will give this to Clinton Portis. He can't carry it more than just two yards. Maybe we give it to him again, see what he can do. Is the lane going to be open? He's going to carry somebody into the end zone. Clinton Portis has been a stud in this series since we we uh, traded for him. And we go up 14-10, to 10 and we got the ball back right away. That's what I love to see. Let's score another touchdown. A little play action. Roll out of the pocket. Rodgers going to take off. Aaron Rodgers into the end zone. A-Rod, baby. Discount double check. Rushing a touchdown in the playoffs. Rushing for a touchdown in the playoffs, I should say. And now we enter the third quarter. And we are starting to cook here. The defense is finally starting to pick up. They don't know how to stop it. The offense is not doing good for the Falcon or for the Eagles. That's going to be Randy Moss. I might have had Antonio Gates now that I think about it. Although he might have been covered. It just looked open because of the way that the throw happened. That's going to be... That was a tight throw. I knew I shouldn't have thrown that. Luckily, the, the corner, the linebacker, whoever was covering him, was not able to get all of his, his hand on it because he could have picked that off pretty easily. All right, this is going to be almost certainly a Clinton Portis keeper. He's going nowhere. Man, that didn't work. I thought that would work. Okay. What do we do here? What do we do here? I don't like this play. Not a whole lot. Let's go in route on Jason Witten. Jason's the target. Uh, Jason's not the target. That's a holding call. But is Aaron Rodgers fast enough? I think he is. He's going to get in, so it's going to come back anyway. But Aaron Rodgers, at least we know, is faster than a defensive lineman. But unfortunately, it's coming back. Good job, Whitworth. I appreciate you holding on that play. I appreciate it. All right. So we regroup. We come back. And we hit that man right there in the... No, that's... Okay, so we're going to kick the field goal. That's the best option here. Get points no matter what. We're going to jump out into Super Sim. Play the key moments. Skip that moment. That's not a key moment. All right, we get the points. So that's good. We enter the fourth quarter. We're up 24 to 10. We stopped them there, but they scored touchdowns, so it's 24-17. Put it in, boys. Put it in. I'm, I'm going to let you do it. There you go. 31-17. This wasn't as straightforward as I would have liked it to be, but you know what? We got the job done anyway. As long as we move on, I guess it doesn't matter how it happens. And there it is. 31-17. We are defeating the Philadelphia Eagles in the divisional round. Let's take a look at the stats. We had Aaron Rodgers go 21 of 30. For 257 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Very good day for Rodgers. Could have been better, but good day. 22 carries, 80 yards, and a touchdown for Clinton Portis. We saw the rushing touchdown. We saw both of these rushing touchdowns, by the way. And Aaron Rodgers got one as well. Witten and Calvin Johnson both had six catches. Witten had 51 yards and a touchdown. Johnson had 110 yards. Randy Moss was the other one who had a touchdown. Defensively, we had Charles Woodson lead us in tackles with eight. We sacked Donovan Nav four times, three by Robert Mathis and one by Thomas Davis. Robert Mathis is becoming like one of the best pass rushers in the league. And then Brian Erlacher picked off Donovan Nav one time. So that is how we defeated the Philadelphia Eagles in the divisional round. We are jumping to the NFC Championship. I don't know who it's against, but hopefully it doesn't matter because we get the W. Tonight. From Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Let's NFC go, Championship go, game. Let's go, Let's go, It's the 
Atlanta Falcons taking on the Washington football team. The NFL playoffs are on EA Sports, and we've got a packed house here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. Coming up, it's a battle to represent the NFC in this year's Super Bowl, and we've got a classic in store between the Washington football team and the Atlanta Falcons. With a trip to the Super Bowl on the line, we are here in the NFC Championship game Commanders versus Falcons. And what a start to the game with Rodgers throwing to Randy Moss. A little bit of on-the-run action, Patrick Mahomes style, even though in this uh, universe, Patrick Mahomes is yet to exist in the NFL. He, he, he's been born, obviously, but he doesn't exist in terms of uh, playing in the NFL. So Aaron Rodgers, I guess, is the man to create these kind of funky passes and stuff. What a throw as a cut to Jason Witten. And it looks like whoever wins this game will play the Indianapolis Colts in the Super Bowl. What a wild scenario. But I've got a deep ball, and it's got Andre Johnson's name on it. Touchdown, Falcons. That's how you start an NFC Championship right off the bat with a big-time touchdown to Andre. Now we continue to see what this defense can do. I'm going to skip some plays, let the CPU take a little bit. The Commanders score a nice touchdown there to make it a seven-point game. Let's see if we can keep things going here. Come on, defense. Stop them. Okay, they tie the game up. I don't like the sound of that. Let's jump in and try and change that. They've got a turnover. We don't have a turnover. One-on-one -on -one coverage with Calvin Johnson on that left sideline. I like my odds. Aaron Rodgers got the X Factor activated, and Megatron has got it in his hands, but he dropped it last second. Unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. I don't want to jump in here and play defense. You, for, you kidding me? You, you kidding me? I'm going to jump in and play defense? They're probably going to score, and they do. So, no, I'm not kicking. I'm, I'm, if I'm not playing defense, I'm not kicking field goals. That's for sure. Kick the field goal. 17-21. Now we've got the opportunity to take the lead here. Rodgers has still got Bazooka activated. I don't know how, even with Bazooka activated, Johnson didn't catch that pass. Somehow, Clinton Portis was still standing there. I'm still standing. I don't know how he was. That was pretty wild. Throw that quickly. That's a nice catch by Randall. Randall K. Moss. That's not his middle name. 251 and one touchdown right now for, for Rodgers. Let's see if we can punch this in. Give it to Adrian Peterson, who was going to be our starting running back next season and for the future if we weren't going to end the series, but he does get one in anyway, so good job for him. Gets us back on the board as a leader. Let's see if we can continue this back in the end zone, hopefully, back in the red zone. Let's see if we can get this in. Adrian Peterson back in again. Is he going to get two for two? He will not, at least right now, we will be denied on first down. We'll go second down and goal from the three. Hand this off to Peterson. He will fall forward to the one. We will not get it in there just yet. Now we got Clinton Portis, but I'm thinking this is going to be a nice slant route to Andre Johnson. And it sure as fact will be, but it's denied. With one second on the clock, we are certainly... 100% going for this. Forget about field goals. We are giving this to Clinton Portis and letting him make the decision. And we are stopped. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done that. If we're being honest. Uh, hold on. Let me change the speed to fast. Why is it like it's not doing anything? I think I broke the game. 28-24. We got to move forward. We can't let this be the end. And it's 34-24. we got to score some sort of touchdown here. It's got to happen, right? I think we got to jump in. It's. I think I broke the game. It's not the super sim's not working or something. Or maybe we weren't close enough. I don't really know what the what the problem was, but it's not good because we are a minute 38 away from being eliminated in this series being over without us even winning a Super Bowl. I don't want that to be the case. That's going to be tipped in the air. I thought maybe it would have been picked off. Glad that it wasn't. Come on, guys. We've still got an opportunity. If we score a touchdown here, there's still 
a glimmer of hope. What a pass. Jason Witten for a touchdown. A minute 15 on the clock. Is that enough? Is that enough time? They got us going for two. I don't hate it. I'm not going to run this ball with Clinton Portis. That didn't work out last time. Although it might have worked out this time. Rodgers got to step up in the pocket. Go and get it, Rodgers. He did it. We're down by a field goal. And Rodgers does the discount double check. We are down by a field goal with a minute 15 to go. There we go. I think I fixed the, the problem. It's third down. Make a big stop. A minute and three seconds to go. They are not in field goal range? I wouldn't think. And that's an offside call. It's first down, so it doesn't matter. They got it anyway. Game's over. You jumped offside. What are you doing? Encroachment on the defense. What are you doing? Mario, you just cost us the series right there. Mario Williams literally just cost us the series. And we lose by three. That's how the series will end in the NFC Championship. Unlike last season, where we went to the Super Bowl and lost, we will go to the NFC Championship and lose. I thought we had the better team. I guess I was severely mistaken because it looks like we didn't. We did not have the better team. Stats on the day, Rodgers 25 of 35, 386 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. It was a good day for Rodgers. Could have been better, but could have been worse, obviously. And we just didn't run the football. That's probably the problem because Clinton Portis, every time we have success, Clinton Portis has always got at least like 60, 70 yards, maybe even 100 yards. But 11 for 14 in a touchdown is not what you want to see. Receiving-wise, Jason Witten, six catches, 85 yards, touchdown. Randy Moss had five for 57. Andre had five for 100 and a touchdown. Megatron had four for 100 and, and no touchdowns. He should have had a touchdown, but he got knocked away. It was a game of just missed opportunities, I guess. Brian Urlacher and Sean Taylor both had seven tackles. We had two sacks with Kevin Williams, one with Robert Mathis, and one for Sean Taylor. And we even picked off the quarterback, whoever the quarterback of the Commanders was, with Darrell Revis. And it was Jeff Garcia. We lost to Jeff Garcia in the NFC Championship. That's crazy. But we will end the series now. Unfortunate. But what are you going to do? That's football. Since we aren't going to be in the Super Bowl this season, or the rest of the series, let's take a look at the Pro Bowl. Aaron Rodgers is going to be the Pro Bowl starter. I'll go down Clinton Portis. I won't name everybody. I'll just name our guys. Jason Witten. We've got Evan Mathis, Jahari Evans, Mario, uh, that's not Mario Williams, wrong, wrong position. Robert Mathis makes it, Kevin Williams makes it, Patrick Willis, Nate Clements. We don't have Charles Woodson still, do we? Do we have Charles Woodson still? I don't think we do. We have Sean Taylor and Steven Gostowski. So we have a lot of, but basically we have a lot of pro bowlers. <laughs> Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Commanders and Colts for the Super Bowl. Who is going to win it? Drop your predictions down low. Here we go. I'm predicting Colts. That's what I, that's my prediction because I don't want to lose to the team that won the Super Bowl. And we did. Commanders are your Super Bowl champions for the final season. Jeff Garcia is the MVP. Rodgers is the regular season MVP. We already knew that. He's also the Offensive Player of the Year. Matt Ryan's the Rookie of the Year. We already knew all those awards. Unfortunately... That is going to be the end of the series. Let's take a look back at all the champions. So, we had a crazy division in this series. Because for a while there, it was every season the NFC representative came from the NFC South. In year number one, it was Tampa. Brad Johnson and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the first Super Bowl of the series. Then the next year, Aaron Brooks and the Saints beat the Steelers and won the Super Bowl. Then in the third season, Carolina went to the Super Bowl with Kerry Collins and won and beat the or lost to the Bengals, excuse me, lost to the Bengals by one point. Then they got back the next season and won it. So they got they went back to back seasons, lost the first year, got revenge, and won it the next year, 24 to 6 over the Jets. Then the Lions beat the streak. They ended the streak of NFC South teams going to the the, the Super Bowl, and the Lions won the Super Bowl over the Ravens with Matt Leinart as the quarterback. Then last season, we went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Jaguars. And then this year, unfortunately, 
we didn't even make it to the Super Bowl. So at least we got one Super Bowl appearance in the series. I'll take that, I guess. I, I'd take a, a Super Bowl win, but... So that's your recap of what has happened in terms of who won everything in the, the series. Let's take a look at the stats for the players. Career stats. So Aaron Rodgers, we drafted Aaron Rodgers. So these are his official stats for the entirety, the entirety of the four years he was in the NFL. 8,800 yards. 65 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. That's really, really good for 4 seasons. He has a career completion percentage of 68%. Average is about 130 yards per game. Has an average passer rating of 109.7 in his career. I'd say that is a very good career so far. 68 games played. We will also take a look at... You know, let's just do it now. I was going to say we also take a look at Michael Vick. Let's just do it right now since he was the man who we built this series around in the first place. 27,500 yards totally, 175 touchdowns through the air, 37 touchdowns or 37 interceptions with a 62% completion percentage. Let's go to the rushing stats. So he finishes with 1,004 attempts, 4,578 yards, an average of 4.6 yards per carry in his career, 50 touchdowns, and he averaged 38 and a half yards per game. I'd say that is a very good career on the ground for Michael Vick he even got an 89 yard run in his career that's pretty awesome so those are Michael Vick's stats rushing stats for Clinton Portis 2,000 attempts 9,000 yards 53 touchdowns one fumble uh, 79 and a half average yards per game Randy Moss even got over almost 4,000 rushing yards good for him Peterson 1,600 yards in two seasons. I'd say that's pretty darn good. 13 carries, or 13 touchdowns. Even Rodgers in his career got over 1,000 yards with nine touchdowns. Good for him. Receiving-wise, obviously, Randy Moss is going to be on top of things because he's been around the longest. 1,018 receptions, 11,995 yards. He just needed five more yards to get 12,000 in his career. Averaged 11.8 yards or receiving average per reception receiving average per reception so that means how many receiving average per reception what is it i'm guessing that's how many catches he i don't even know what that means really that's throw i just had a brain blast there average yards per game so he averaged 51.3 yards per game does that mean that's how many average how many catches he got per game i think that's what that means i have no idea the, the wording of that just threw me off he had 58 touchdowns in his career, and he had almost 3,000 yards after the catch. That's pretty good. Andre Johnson comes in second with uh, almost 6,000 yards in his career, 45 touchdowns. Jason Witten up next with uh, 5,400, 36 touchdowns. Wes Welker had 3,600 yards and 12 touch or 23 touchdowns. Clinton Portis even through the air had a decent amount of yards. Malcolm Floyd pretty good Marquise Colston not too shabby and Calvin Johnson Calvin Johnson would have been a lot higher but we didn't really get to use him a lot so and then Antonio Gates as well blocking wise we had most career sacks allowed was Jordan Gross but 39 sacks across 102 games I don't really hate that that's pretty good splits Andrew Whitworth 37 Evan Mathis 22 12 for Jahari Evans defensively here's where we get crazy Here's where we get crazy. 954 tackles for Brian Erlacher. 774 for Nate Clements. Charles Woodson. So we did have Charles Woodson. I thought we did. 530 for him. Sean Taylor, 465. Keith Davis, 395. 382 for Kevin Williams. We also had 372 for Randall Gay. Then we go to the interception. The tackle for loss leaders was Kevin Williams with 94. That's a lot of tackles for loss. Sack leader was also Kevin Williams with 40. 25 and a half for Robert Mathis in his career. Mario Williams had 22. Thomas Davis, 15 and a half. Justin Tuck, 12 and a half. A lot of guys had some decent amount of sacks. Now we get to the good part. Interception leader, Nate Clements. He had such a good career. 23 interceptions. Woodson comes in second with 16. Darrell Revis had six in his young career. He probably would have got a ton more if we would have kept going. Fumble recoveries, Brian Erlacher has 11 in his career. Uh, Sean Taylor has eight. Willis has five. He also has the most recoveries in his career with six. 
Then we also have two block kicks in our in our history with two for Mario Williams. Safeties, Justin Tuck has two. Thomas Davis has one. Robert Mathis has one. Defensively, uh, defensive touchdowns, Nate Clements has three. I'm guessing those are all pick sixes. I, I shouldn't say that because he's got some recovery, so that could have been that too. Charles Woodson has three. Willis has two. Mathis, Taylor, and Gay all have one. Kicking-wise, Steven Gostowski in his career, 84 for 101. Is good for an 83%. 56 was his longest. He had three field goals blocked in his career. And he also just missed one, it looks like. Uh, actually, no, wait, no, I'm stupid. Because I thought this was this, for that stat. No, extra points, he missed four of them. Didn't have any blocks, but he just, had, he just missed four of them. All right, whatever. Punting, we don't care about because we don't punt the football on this channel. Uh, Marquise Colston in his career, 27 kick returns for 651 yards. Wes Welker had the only kick return touchdown in our entire series. Punt return, he also had the only two punt return touchdowns. So good for Wes Welker. He may not have done amazingly in terms of receiving, but he did good special teams. And we can take a look at the legacy leaderboard. We come in as third all-time head coach with no Super Bowls, one NFC Championship, and one Coach of the Year. We just needed a Super Bowl, a couple Super Bowls probably, to pass Urban Meyer and Sean Payton. But it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate that we will not be getting it. Drew Bledsoe, seven Super Bowls in his career. Is he the new GOAT? Is Drew Bledsoe the new GOAT? Seven Super Bowls. Wow, that's crazy. So, he was on the Patriots teams that won the Super Bowl. At least he was on the first one. How did he get seven Super Bowls? That's crazy. Did Drew Butts was Drew Butts on every team? <laughs> how did he get how did he get seven Super Bowls? Can I see what teams he played for? Was he on the Bills his entire career? He was. Oh, but it counts him on New England for all of the that's how he's got it. Because the Patriots won the Super Bowl in 2014, 2016, and 2018. So that's three. Oh, this is Tom Brady. This is Tom Brady's stats. Well, not stats, but his his career from 2010. Because he goes from 2010 to 2020, or 2019, and then 2020 he's on Tampa Bay, and then 2021 he's on Buffalo. That's Tom Brady. No wonder, I didn't think that Drew Bledsoe had that many Super Bowls. Yeah, so it's counting as Tom Brady. Because the Patriots won in 2014 against the Seahawks. That was the Malcolm Butler play. Then they won in 2016 against the Falcons. That was the 28-3. And then 2018 against the Rams was the, the boring defensive Super Bowl. And then Tampa against Mahomes and the Chiefs. Huh. Interesting. Very, is Tom Brady even on here? Go to quarterbacks is... Is Tom Brady even an option? Tom Brady is an option. So what, is it, what does his stats have? He's got Carolina and then New England for two seasons in 2020. So it's like Drew Bledsoe and Tom Brady are the same person, but they got like split. And half of Tom Brady's stats went with Drew Bledsoe and the other half went, stayed with the actual Tom Brady. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's so, so crazy. But at least we know that Tom Brady at least exists. And he's only got one Super Bowl. So it looks like Drew Bledsoe's got all the Super Bowls. Michael Vick never won one. But he is in the top four all-time quarterbacks. That's pretty good. Edger and James leads running backs. Then you got uh, Barnes leading fullbacks. Taylor leads the wide receivers by a big margin. And then that's got to be... I don't know who that is. And then Randy Moss and Chad Johnson... Tight end Tony Gonzalez. Left tackle is Brown with Jonathan Ogden there. Alan Faneca. Wade and Kreitz. McFadden. Walker. Is that Sean Ellis? And then Jabril Peppers, who's got a Super Bowl. And then you got Pickett and Warren Sapp and Booger McFarlane. Then you got Simeon Rice. Jason Taylor. Justin Smith. Richard Seymour. Some really good legends there. No really good on the left outside linebacker. Middle linebacker, not great. Keith Brooking, we, he was on our team for a little bit. And then, uh, was he on our team? I think he was. There's Joey Porter. 
Then you got corners. I would expect to see... There's Rondé Barber and Champ Bailey. I would expect to see uh, Darrell Rivas up here pretty soon, but not for a while. And we will never see him up there. There's Charles Woodson at free safety. Then you got strong safety. There's Ed Reed. And then kicker Automatica Grammatica. There he is. That's, that's the wrong Grammatica. This is the right Grammatica. That's Automatica Grammatica. And then there's Janikowski. There's Vinatieri. Gostowski would probably be up here pretty soon, too, if he kept playing. There's the punters. And then we get back to head coaches. All right. So that's all of the... I think that's all the wrap-up that we need to do. I think anything else is is uh, just kind of just go back and watch the rest of the series. It's unfortunate. It really is that we didn't get to the Super Bowl. I am kind of upset about that. But, hey, man, it is what it is. Sometimes you, you just can't. You just don't. You're not. You're not your good self. You're not. You're not that great. So, I hope you guys do understand that I just don't want to carry too many old Madden series over to the new cycle. I want to get fresh content. I'm already going to be struggling to get out content as it is. So I want to get as much new Madden 23 content as possible, so you guys can see the game and you can decide for yourself if you haven't already bought it. If you want to buy it, by judging by like how my gameplay goes and like all the stuff how what i'm saying about it so i have yet to play i've only i didn't play the beta so i have no idea i'm gonna be going in blind when i get it on the 16th i think is what it is next week sometime so yeah i, I just uh i don't want to bring any any old series besides the cougars over to madden 23 and i wouldn't even bring the cougars over to madden 23 if the season was over like if if i would have finished the season before this cycle came out then i i wouldn't have brought it over but i don't want to end the series abruptly like i'm doing with this series and the, Le the legend series so the cougars will continue until the season is over and then that'll be the end of that so that we're in the final season right now but madden 23 content is coming out next week i hope you guys are excited because i know i am i can't wait for the new cycle i want to play the game i want to get my hands on it i want to see how it is and i, I can't wait to get some new series going for you guys because kind of feel like uh, we've just been doing the same thing for a few months now so got to get that fresh stuff that fresh feel out so i hope you guys are excited i know i am i hope you guys understand as well about this series i, I know that it's it sucks that it's over i, I hate that it's over but it's got to be so i hope you guys understand thank you so much for stopping by and watching i really do appreciate it and uh hit that like button if you enjoyed subscribe to the channel join the juice club i'll catch you guys in the next one peace